Hey, what's happening, guys? I want to talk to you about Arduino today and the Arduino architecture and kind of how all the puzzle pieces fit together <clears throat> and maybe make it a little bit easier for you guys who are just getting started to understand. So here we have an Arduino Nano. It is, you know, functionally electrically the same as an Uno R3. I like Nanos because they fit on breadboards. You can use either one. So we have our Nano, you know, it's hooked up to power through USB there. We have a switch and we have an LED. So when we press the switch, the LED lights. This is about as basic of a, a circuit as we can make. Okay, so let's talk about it, and then I'm going to show you how everything goes together. So our Arduino here, kind of think of it as being in the middle of the circuit, even though it's over here on the left. We have an input on the left side, and we have our output on the right side. So what the Arduino is doing, it, it is watching for an input. In this case, it is this button. And we've told the Arduino through a little bit of simple programming, when you see something on this pin, do something on this pin. Because you see how they're next to each other? They're just, um, one's plugged into D2, the, the, the switch is plugged into D2, and the LED is plugged into D3. So, you understand how this works. The Arduino is watching pin D2, it is actually watching it for a low signal. You see this? This is a 10K resistor. It's called a pull-up resistor. And it is holding pin 2 at 5 volts. So if you put a multimeter on pin 2, you're going to read 5 volts until you press the button. When you press the button, what are we doing? Well, we're going through the button. We are shorting that 5 volts to ground. But we have a 10K resistor here. So we don't do a direct short and blow anything up. The 10K resistor holds pin 2 at 5 volts when it is not being used. Because microprocessors and digital electronics in general, the inputs can do what's called float. If they're not either held high or held low, they could be anywhere in between 0 and 5 volts. And then the Arduino doesn't know what to do. So over here, we have pin 3 coming out to the anode, the plus side of our LED, going through a 470 ohm resistor to ground. That's our circuit. So let's start with the input side. In this case, I've used a switch. Just a simple tack switch is all it is. This is a large one to make it easy for you guys to see, but it doesn't have to be a large one. It can be a smaller one. So what I've got here is basically all of my Arduino components. And some of them behave as inputs, and some of them behave as outputs. For instance, here is a different type of switch. This is a micro switch. And we could use it in place of our push button switch. No problem. Let's see what else do we have for inputs here. This is a, um, a microphone switch. We did a video on this making the clapper last week. When it detects a sound level higher than you have put here, then it sends a positive signal. And again, that can be used in place of the push button. Uh, this is an infrared sensor. We used it, I don't know, a month or so ago when we made a flame detector. This detects the infrared light giving off by flames. And now this one will work in two ways. It'll put, it'll output a, uh, a regular voltage or it'll output a, uh, an on off signal, but the same thing. It's a switch on off. This one's a little bit more complicated. This is a joystick switch. So if we look at it in this direction, is this actually the direction they have any markings on it? I think it goes this way. So we have an X movement 
we have a Y movement, and we have a Z click. So we can give a uh, an on off Z click here to act just like a switch, but we can also do an analog signal on the Y and on the X axis to go up and down. But we'll talk more about that later. Now here's one of my absolute favorites. This is a uh, infrared motion sensor and it's super simple to use all we have to do like say for instance we wanted to replace our button with the infrared motion sensor all right so let's take our button out of the equation let's take everything out here and let's put this guy in like this So he needs a plus, or she needs a plus, somebody needs a plus. They need some potential. And they're also going to need some ground. So what we're doing here is we're making a little, little circuit. Now... I don't have my ground going both ways here. Is there another ground on this side? Yeah, give me one second. I'll hook that up. Okay, so now I put in the infrared sensor, and if I move my hand, it lights up. But you can see it is the exact same thing. All we've done is we've replaced one switch for another switch. Let's do it again. Let's do it with uh, nah, not something to do with that one. Hang on a second. Here is another one. This is a microwave room sensor that can tell you if somebody is in the room. And if we look here, if it'll focus. Be in, out, ground, 3.3. I'd have to look and see uh, if it's 5-volt compatible. But that's another way we can do that. Oh, let's see what else we have. Here is a... Uh, this is a uh, light detecting uh, resistor, an LDR. And it's got another resistor in there. So we can have a little two-way thing going on. Let's see if I can make that work. So here is the light dependent resistor plugged in and again you can see it just has ground VCC and some sort of voltage and now if I cover that and it comes right back it's just as simple as that. And like I said we can use any of these different inputs. <clears throat> Here's a fun one. This is what I call a, a tilt sensor. So when you put this in, um, it detects a vibration and it sets off the switch if there's a vibration. There's a little spring in there that's attached to one of these contacts and the outside of the can is attached to the other contact and it just vibrates. Like a, <laughs> something a crazy bomb maker would use, you know? Weird. So all the different inputs. Um, here's one that will follow a line. This is a line follower. So those are our digital inputs. Now, we also have analog inputs. Here's a potentiometer. You can turn it from one to the other and it will vary the resistance. Those can be used with analog inputs. <clears throat> now, these two guys here are DHT11 sensors, and hang on one second here, somewhere, somewhere in this mess. These are all, um, this is a BMP280, I think. Yeah, 280. These are environmental sensors that will give you temperature and pressure and, uh, this one, these two will do temperature and pressure. This will do temperature, pressure, 
think it'll do altitude as well. But these output an analog signal, a voltage, that can be picked up by the analog to digital converter in the Arduino's analog pins. So these digital pins over here can only input or output uh, a zero or a one, zero volts or five volts. These ones over here can input and output anywhere between zero and five. So those are the input sides. Now, if we go over to the output, we've just used a simple LED. Nothing special there at all. Well, we can use different outputs as well. So here are a selection of different outputs that we can use. And the one I'm missing here is uh, probably my favorite, a relay. But we have a uh, 16 by 2 LED that has an I squared C backpack on it so you don't have to hook up all 16 or 20 of those pins. We have a little um, four digit seven segment display and this runs on clock data I squared C it looks like. We have a bunch of little um, OLED screens. We have a little stoplight screen. Uh, we have a laser. Yeah, we can, we can actually put a laser into our circuit. So let's just say I put this over here like this. And it needs VCC. And it's going to need a ground. Okay, so I hooked up the ground in the V+, and now if we move our signal wire over to here, now when we press a button, we get a laser. Just, you know, there's just so many different things you can do. Here is an RGB LED, common cathode. So now you have an option of three different outputs, a red, a green, and a blue LED, depending on what you tell the Arduino to do. And it just goes on and on and on. Like this, here's a capacitive touch sensor, um, a level shifter. If you get started down this rabbit hole, you're going to end up with a lot of these. But you're going to have a lot of fun, and you're going to find there's really nothing you can't create. If you put your mind to it, find the right input pieces, the right output pieces, and uh, you can find libraries that will help you with the programming. Yeah, it's very cool. So I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment, share, and don't forget to subscribe. Big thanks to all the patrons. Big thanks to you guys for watching. That's it. I'm out. Peace.